Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I get a lot of people messaging me and asking me what settings I use in order to get the quality prints that I get. So in today's video, I'm gonna unveil some of my secrets that really are not so secret. So I'm gonna share my settings that I use on my printers with you today. So here's the thing. I use the same settings for all of my printers on all of the different kinds of resins that I use. Now I have spent months of tweaking these settings in order to get them to be able to use in all of my printers. These may or may not work in your machines. You can try and tweak them if you want to, to, to fit your needs, uh, but this is uh, how I generally do it. But hey, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give me a like or two, leave some comments below and also turn on that notification bell that way you don't miss out on any future videos so what do you say we get started so i have spent hours in working with different exposure times looking at best ways to get details to be able to pop out like this but through a lot of trial and error i've managed to find that sweet spot in order to get crispy clean prints and the results so far have worked out pretty good for me. So let's get a model on the bill plate and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we have the Wolverine on the Uniformation GK2. Now I'm going to show you my settings here and I'll explain to you why I did what I did. So <clears throat> basically the print settings right here, uh, I'm pretty basic with my layer high at 0 0.05. My bottom layer count I have is five. My exposure time is three. That is pretty much the sweet spot for me. Uh, I use that pretty much exposure time with uh, all of my printers. And the bottom exposure time is set at 35. I do not have any transition layer count. Uh, and the transition type is basically at linear, set at linear. And the waiting mode uh, during printing is resting time. Uh, however, I have it all turned off. It's all zeros. I have no rest time whatsoever on it. Um, I don't see any point in it. Um, when the printer is running, I just want it to keep going. And I basically don't need any type of rest time after the lift or anything like that for the printer. Uh, the bottom lift distance, I usually keep at five to eight. Uh, that really depends. So on the small midsize SLA printers, I keep it at five. On my larger printers, I do increase it to eight and I keep everything here at zeros. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I, again, I just really don't need that uh, extra extra time. Um, so retract distance, bottom retract distance is automatically at five. My bottom lift speed is at 60 and my regular lifting speed is at 80. My bottom retraction speed is at 110 and the regular retraction speed is at 120. I use it basically in uh, intervals of 20. I increase that. No really reason why I just do that, uh, just because uh, it works. And uh, it's been working for me ever since I've been experimenting with all this. So these are the settings. Basically, I keep it pretty much stock on the advanced settings. And when it comes to the resin, of course, you can calculate that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have any effect whatsoever. So these are all my print settings that I currently use right now for my Uniformation GK2, I use that for my Lenant Base AK, my Anycubic Photon Mono Xs, and any Elgu um, printers that I may have. However, this may vary uh, from printer to printer for you guys. Uh, this is um, what I use. It's, I, it's been successful for me. I don't need to change it. This may be a starting point for you, and you can tweak it if you want, but um, this is how I do it. So with the head on the build plate, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how one more time how I orientate this right here. So what I want is I kind of go for a straight uh, on a, like a head sculpt. I go for kind of just a straight on uh, look. I tilt the head back a little and then try to get it straight here. And then all I'm doing is I wanna make sure that I don't have any straight uh, parallel planes on here with the build plate. I want to make sure everything is at an angle all the way from the peg to the uh, the hood right here. Everything is at an angle. The head is at an angle. Uh, and I like to tilt this back because I don't like any of the supports in the face where it's taking up a lot of the detail on the model. 
So when I go and I hollow everything, this is the wall thickness that I usually hollow it at 1.8, or I go down to a 1.5. Precision is turned on to 50, and I do use a infill structure. This the grid 3D right here with a density of 5%. I do that because I don't like supports going uh, through my model. Uh, they catch resin, they break off. It's not very supportive at all. The infill structure keeps everything stabilized. Uh, and plus, if you have a, an infill structure within your model, Chi2Box automatically knows not to put any outside supports within the model. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. So once all that is done, you will basically see here how the model is hollowed on the inside and you'll see a little bit of that grid infill structure there. Uh, and now I want to add drain holes. Now for a head, obviously you don't want to add drain holes into the top of it. So therefore what I'll do is I usually keep the uh, depth at around five millimeters and my basic size is for five millimeters. Uh, now one thing I can say is if you are going to use magnets, uh, what you may want to do is add the magnet size hole. Uh, in that case, it'll be five millimeters right here into the peg so it can magnetize inside the torso when you get that printed out. One hole I usually don't do. I usually do more than one hole because I want proper drainage. So I'll add another one here. And sometimes I'll add one right here. And that should be sufficient. Now keep in mind when you take the head off the build plate, there may be a little resin up in here, but when you flip it back over, the resin will actually come out. It will be minimal. It's not going to be uh, a tremendous amount of resin that's trapped in the head. Uh, and then I'll just go back and make sure that I don't have any pockets or any islands or anything like that. As you can see, the ears right here on the, uh, on the head will uh, print as one piece. There's nothing to be trapped up into there everything looks good and so now I'm gonna add supports so what I do is auto supports I don't do any pre support uh, files I don't do any pre supports at all I let everything uh, I let Chi2 box do everything and these are basically my support settings which are basically stock my Z lift here I usually keep it at five or six uh, and that is basically how high it actually takes it off of the build plate. If you have a zero uh, Z lift on here, you need to put something on there because you're basically printing dead onto the, uh, onto the build plate and that's not really good. That's setting yourself up for a failure. The other thing that I do differently is I always use medium supports. A lot of people use light or heavy. I usually keep everything at medium and my support settings are the same for all of my models. Um, so the only other thing that I change is the density percentage here. As you can see, it's 40. I think by default it's 50. Uh, every now and then, if I print a smaller model, I will actually uh, bring it down to 30. And as you can see, the density percentage will actually put more uh, supports onto your model. That's really not good if you're trying to print a detailed piece because the more supports you get on there, the more you're going to have to sand that off and it's going to take away from your details in your model. So everything else is pretty much bone stock compared to what Chi2Box uh, wants. Middle support or the middle settings, the bottom settings, the raft. I basically just... Uh, uh, do everything just stock wise and then all I'm going to do is if I feel like that I need to add supports I will but I'm going to go ahead and hit all and let it go ahead and generate the supports on the model okay so now that we have the auto supports on the model I'm taking a look at this and if I don't want something on here in particular I just take it off now the one thing that concerns me is these supports that automatically generated onto the fangs here um, I, you can leave them on there if you want, or if you want to take them off, which is what I'm going to do, then I will actually just go in and hit the su uh, subtract settings right here, delete support right there. And then I'll go in and just highlight those supports and remove them. 
and then I'll hit the subtract button there and it takes the supports away. So right now I'm looking at nothing in the face that is going to take away from any detail. I'm going to leave the one support there in the mouth. I don't feel like I need to take that away. But everything is under the chin and that's because I've actually tilted the head back. If you have it straight, you're going to run a risk of having supports up in your face in the eyeballs or anything like that and they could take away from the detail or the focal point of the head sculpt. Now once I kind of go around the model and I look at all the supports and where they're setting, uh, I'll to make a determination whether I need to add more or I can take some more away. I'm pretty satisfied with where they're at. It uh, doesn't look like anything is going to really be tough sanding off or anything of the sort. And all I will do is I will go ahead and bring the model in and slice it. Now once you have the model sliced, you can look over here, of course, see your volume and your weight. Uh, this is basically how much resin you're going to be using. This is the time. The time is usually not the time is usually not too far off on some of these printers. On the larger printers, uh, you might as well double it. it. It seems like those printers are slow, super slow. And of course, you look at your, your times here. You want to adjust those if you need to. Um, but I'm satisfied with everything. And I'm going to go ahead and save it to the zip drive and go ahead and put it on the printer. And this is going to be my model. Now keep in mind this is something I've been experimenting with for quite some time now and I just found the sweet spot that actually works for me. This may be a starting point for you. This may be a great uh, tool for you to use. It may not work for you at all, but uh, a lot of people have asked about my settings and this is what I get to get the good, clean, crispy prints that I've been printing for the past couple of years now. Now I've been using all sorts of resin as well. I've been using anything from Elgu to any cubic to Lenance own resin, Frozen. I've also been using this JAMG 10K resin. And now I've been using Sunlu for quite some time and all of these resins work perfect. Now I'm also talking about, I use the settings for the clear resin, uh, different translucent colors, uh, the only thing that I have not used these settings on very much is the water washable resins. They may change because of the different type of chemistry that the resin is. However, I'm going to try it and see what happens. So I've started on my new Wolverine print right here, which is going to go uh, with my Punisher Bad Knight for the Ninjas. Uh, this is the other half of it right here, printed in quarter scale. This was actually printed on the Uniformation GK2 uh, with a, I used a mixture of the Lenance resin uh, along with the JAMG 10K resin. And, and this turned out really, really good. Um, it No failures whatsoever. Uh, the details are spot on. I didn't have any issues with any type of shrinking or anything like that, anything major. The head fits on pretty good. Uh, and so this is what I'm going with for right now. And keep in mind, if you are a member of my Patreon, you will be getting this file as well. I have sent over the Punisher files to my current Patreon members. And this one is coming up for our April model, so be on the lookout for this. If you're not a current member and you want to join to get the files, you have to join the $10 tier in order to get these. So this isn't something that I'm going to be doing every single month, but when I'm able to uh, commission something out with another artist and give back to my Patreon members, then this is what I'm going to do. And speaking of Patreon members, I want to give a huge shout out to my community out there. Without their support, a lot of these videos probably wouldn't be possible for me to make. And speaking of Patreon members, we got quite a few new ones this week. Let's take a look here. Let's welcome Luis Ramirez, Terry Holman, C. Church, Dustin Crank, Dauntless, Misfit Minute Man, Jeff Missler, Anthony DeRanieri, David Malav, John Long, Russell Wolf, that was bad, Julio Augustine, Stuart Cook, Rocky Tiomanen, I'm sure I butchered that one too, Tanya Isis Creations, Rares Roman, Mario C. Ayala, 
Quinn Mailing, Felicity Bridges, Hector's Artwork, and Chuck Rodriguez, Randy Burkhead, David Shermion, another one I just probably totally butchered that one, Stephen Bruce, and Christopher Shepard. Thank you guys so much for becoming the newest Patreon members. I hope you enjoyed the Discord. If you want to be a member of the Patreon, the link is below in the description as well. We would love to have you over on Discord. We talk about all things printing and painting. And you can also support the channel by using some of the affiliate links below in the description. These are things that I actually use in my videos. I do get a little kickback from Amazon for those, but it's at no extra cost to you. I would greatly appreciate it if you would uh, click on the links when you decide to buy some stuff. So yeah. And my biggest supporters come from you, the people who watch the videos. Give us a like, leave some comments, share the video, and watch the next one. Yeah. And I hope this helped you with some of your questions that you may have had about settings, about what I use. Hopefully, again, this could be a starting tool for you, something you could tweak to use to your advantage. And if you've already got it mastered, then thank you for watching anyway. Even that one person who just seems to just dislike my, all my videos. That's, that's, oh yeah. And for everybody else out there, be safe, get out and create something, print, prep, paint, repeat, and until the next video, or the next live stream, or whatever the hell I come up with next, we'll see you. So are you guys ready for a four and a half feet tall Galactus. It's coming up very soon.